As a strength and conditioning coach who's worked extensively with athletes from multiple sports, I've found the principles of strongman training transfer brilliantly to jiu-jitsu practitioners. Incorporating the right strongman exercises can fill the gaps in your strength training routine. Zach Evanesh, who was on the Sweet Science of Fighting podcast, coined this term training the in-between muscles, and I really like that philosophy around these exercises. Now you might be wondering why strongman exercises for jiu-jitsu? After all, jiu-jitsu is mainly about technique, and if we're doing strength training, we can just do typical powerlifting or bodybuilding movements. But we know strength and power are advantages, and the unique demands of strongman training can develop these attributes in ways traditional lifting might not. I've seen this firsthand with athletes I coach. Strongman exercises build raw strength and enhance grip, all while moving heavy loads. Whether it's holding an opponent in guard, escaping a submission, or maintaining control in a scramble, the strength you build from these exercises directly translate to better performance on the mat. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the five best strongman exercises I recommend for jiu-jitsu athletes and ones that I often program. In fact, in almost every grappling strength conditioning program in the Sweet Times of Finding Underground, you will find some form of strongman exercise and they're usually from this list. These are tried and tested movements that will help you develop strength and power that can give you a serious advantage in your roles. But before I get into them, I just released the free, yes free, Jiu-Jitsu Strength and Conditioning Blueprint. It'll be down in the first link in the description. I'll also pin it in the comment. You can get that right now. But exercise number one, it involves the sandbag. Now, if you're looking at sandbags to have in your home gym or to use, I recommend Iron Mind. That is the one I'm using right now. You typically can actually find them on various marketplaces secondhand, but they're used in the World's Strongest Man competitions, so they're durable, they've been tested at heavy loads, you have no worries with them. So those are the ones I recommend. But we're gonna start with the Bear Hug Carry. What I like about the Bear Hug Carry is other than being a front-loaded carry, which really challenges your posture, you're able to use different grips while you're doing it. For example, you can use a gable grip, you can use an S grip, butterfly grip, and to really challenge yourself, you can use a monkey grip if you're holding the bag lengthways so your hands don't connect. You could almost call this a quote-unquote specific jujitsu carry since you're able to strengthen yourself with those grips while holding the bag. The fact that it is front loaded means it challenges your upper back, so you're having to maintain upright postures. Again, important for resisting posture breaks in someone's guard while wrestling, etc. Depending on the size of the bag is going to be what grips you can use. For example, if your bag is a little small like the one I'm using here, it's difficult to S grip because it is so close to your body. Whereas if you have a more filled bag, it's a lot easier to S grip, but harder to gable grip, especially if you have short arms. So you can mix up the grips depending on the kind of bags you're using. In terms of weight sets reps, weights is just gonna depend on the bag you have. Thing above 30, 40 kilos is probably gonna be good to use. You can go for max distance, you can go for time, you can do repeated distance efforts. It doesn't matter too much. I typically like to do two to three sets at the end of a session, anywhere from 20 to 40 meters, and you're typically going near as heavy as possible for those 20 to 40 meters. That's a good place to start, and if you really want to challenge yourself, you can go for distance or time or weight. The second exercise, again using the sandbag, but this time in the zercher position. So a sandbag zercher carry. Same thing, another front-loaded carry. So you're targeting that posture, the upper back, but because you're holding it in the zercher position, the bag is a little higher and a little further in front, which means you're gonna feel <laughs> your abs like never before, as you try not to collapse under the weight. Now, if you don't have a sandbag, you can do this with a barbell, like you would do a zercher squat. Not as comfortable and not as easy to perform, especially if you don't have the space. So a sandbag is always a better option for these zercher carries. But what I like to emphasize with these is trying to keep the elbows up high. You'll find that if you keep the elbows up high, it increases the difficulty of holding that load versus having your elbows down low and it's starting to crunch your upper back over. The third exercise, the last one with the sandbag is the fireman's carry. Again, you're gonna put this over your shoulder and you can walk the same 20 to 40 meters. The goal here is start trying to remain vertical and not let it crunch you over to either side. So you'll find that as a trunk exercise targeting anti-lateral flexion. So basically resisting the movement to bend side to side. You'll find that this works muscles that you probably haven't touched in a while within your training. Exercise number four, one that you will be familiar with, it's the farmer's walk. Typically I like to do farmer's walks with farmer's handles because the handle is above the load. It's much easier to hold and it's much easier to go heavy. If you're using dumbbells, it becomes very difficult to load them heavy enough 
to challenge the body, a lot of the time you're just really challenging the grip. We want to challenge both. Same thing, you go 20 to 40 meters, a few sets, max distance, max weight. These are all viable. In terms of the farmer's bars you're using, some are too short and you end up kicking your shins in front of them. So just be careful if you're using shorter farmer's bars. The other option is using a trap bar. So trap bars make good equipment options for doing farmer's walks as well. The important thing is that when you're moving, you're keeping that upright posture and you're not letting the weight fold you over. And the last exercise, it is the suitcase carry, just a variation of the farmer's walk. It's just like our sandbag fireman's carry, we're resisting lateral flexion, challenging the grip with the suitcase carry, and you're able to go heavy enough to be able to walk that weight. Now you might be wondering, okay, that's five relatively simple exercises with a couple of pieces of equipment. Why not things like tire flips or pulling heavy trucks? Tire flips I'm not a fan of as a strongman exercise, mainly because you have such a high risk of bicep tears. This is the one exercise in strongman where you see the highest rate of bicep tears because of the way people do them. There is actually a very high skill component in flipping a tire. It's not putting your hands directly under it. That is how you tear your bicep. You actually don't put your hands under the tire. Your hands go around the tire like a big monkey hole. That's one of the reasons I don't like tire flips. In terms of pulling heavy trucks, those are all good options too. Obviously they require a lot of equipment and a lot of setup. Sure, you could do heavy sled drags, etc. but I typically don't count sleds as part of the strongman training. Now these are set up to be done heavy for distance to develop strength, but you can also use strongman training as part of your conditioning. And I think for grappling arts like Jiu Jitsu, Strongman style conditioning is probably the most applicable out of all the martial arts. If you go listen to the podcast episode with Ed Cosner that was recent, he likes to use strongman training circuits often and we go into details of how he likes to set them out. But you could do something very similar with this. You can do carry medleys, loading medleys, and even just combine them. For example, you might walk your 10 meters and back with the sandbag holding in a, one of the front load carry variations. And then you might pick up the farmer's bars and do the same thing there and back. That could be a very simple conditioning modality, improving work capacity, grip strength, you're getting a lot of stuff done at once. You can take it a step further, you can do more carries in a medley, you could just do carries, you can load bags. The options are endless. You can essentially set up a circuit for however long you want. If you're wanting to go more quote unquote on the endurance side, we could have a shorter circuit with heavier weights if you wanted to do more of a strength style circuit. This is where it's very versatile to use strongman exercises as well. So please like and comment if you enjoyed this. Again, first link in the description, you will find the free Jiu Jitsu Strength Conditioning Blueprint and I'll see you in the next video.